Okay, so we have got a roundup for you today on the channel. Um, we've been doing that a fair bit over the summer. Right now, though, we have plenty to chat about. We took a little bit of a break from real current events in terms of a roundup on yesterday's video, and we focused in on one player in particular, new Celtic signing Ben Segrist. We found out about him, had a bit of a chat about what he could bring to the club, and we heard from the man himself. So if you want to go all in on Ben Segrist, and I wouldn't blame you at all, then check that video out from yesterday. It's linked at the top right of the screen there. In terms of today, Today's video, well, the fact that we took yesterday off from current events has allowed lots of things to happen and I'm going to tell you about all of them today. The obvious place to start is with a guy called Alexandro Bernabe. You're probably already familiar with his name because I've been chatting about him for probably a fortnight, if not longer now, and so has basically everyone else. Um, but you're going to get to know his name even more, I would suggest, because it seems very much like he is going to be a Celtic player and very soon. The last time we mentioned his name, the position that we were in, um, was that we were trying to agree a fee with his club Lanus for his services. The chat was that they wanted £4 million, we wanted £2 million. Well, the update is, um, and things have moved on quite quickly over the last 48 hours, that we have now agreed a fee for Bernabe, said to be around £3.75 million. That has been reported by many outlets and he is now set for a medical in Scotland. In fact, we had this tweet yesterday from journalist Cesar Luis Merlo, who has 170,000 followers on Twitter, which is not bad going at all, saying that Bernabe will arrive in Scotland this week and sign a five-year deal once he undergoes his medical. That certainly seems to be the case, judging from a video that we saw on Instagram a couple of days ago now, posted by Lanus staff member Vasily Bogdanov, which seemed to show Bernabe saying goodbye to his teammates. It was very much like the stuff we saw uh, from Kyogo, and I think maybe Hatate as well last season. So it seems very much you know, putting these things together. And you don't need to be Sherlock Holmes to work out that Bernabe is going to be coming to Scotland very soon. Um, it seems like this deal is going to happen. And we've got our left back, and I don't think you can really argue with that at all. I'm going to reserve judgment on what he could offer Celtic, what kind of player he is, until I speak to an expert. And we will hopefully have that coming as a video very soon for you. We know you love those insight videos that we do on the channel. And it'll be great for me and the rest of you at the same time to find out all about Bernabe. But that's kind of where we're at at the moment with regards to him. In terms of other stuff, the reports about Alpha Semedo, the guy who is playing in Portugal that we mentioned earlier in the week, and I kind of said at the time that it didn't quite stack up as far as I was concerned. Well, shock horror, I was proven to be correct because there is nothing in that at all. And it seems like that was just someone making up something, which is just something that I would never do at all. And I completely condemn any sort of behavior like that. So it doesn't seem like Alpha Semedo is a name we need to worry about at all. Vinicius Souza, the Brazilian... Midfielder playing for Lomel in Belgium. He's got, I think it's now three quarters of Europe hunting his signature. The likes of PSV, Ajax, Fenerbahce, Club Bruges, Celtic, of course, as well. No real change there at the moment. Um, we'll let you know if anything changes there. I think if we can get Bernabe and Jota over the line, as well as Carter Vickers, which we've already sorted a couple of weeks ago, That'll be a pretty good place for Celtic to, to enter pre-season with. There's no obvious weak points in that squad. I think we'll sign more players, but I think it's a really good starting point. We read Ange's quotes uh, over the summer or, or late last season, whenever it was, about wanting to, to come back into pre-season with certainly a fair bit of the business done. And if we can get Bernabe, which seems very likely that's going to be done now in the next few days, I would say, and Jota... 
Um, maybe taking slightly longer, but certainly no real doubts that, that Jota is going to be a Celtic player permanently next season. If we can get both of those done on top of Carter Vickers, if you add Segrist into the mix as well, I think that is, is really good going from a Celtic point of view. And I think uh, I think it just gives us a real good kind of platform to build from. As I say, there's there's no weak points really in that squad anymore, as far as we're concerned. Ange, you know, with his critical eye and his want and need to keep improving we'll probably look at certain areas and think yeah we could do an extra player in there but I think you know maybe taking a little bit longer than people would want with regards to to Jota and and players like that but I think um, we're really ahead of the game here and I think it's looking really promising in terms of outgoings that's obviously going to be a big part of the summer as well as Mela Soro said to be nearing an exit I feel like I've said that 19 times before on the channel. Football Scotland are suggesting that a loan move to Partizan Belgrade could be in order for him. The only other two players we've lost on loan so far this summer are Vasilis Barkas to Utrecht and Liam Scales to Aberdeen. Obviously, those two aren't going to be in pre-season training at Lennox Town. Neither will Tom Rogic or Nier Beaton. Very sad about that, but we've known about that for a while. So you're kind of looking at four out, four in. We'll return to transfer matters very soon, I'm sure, on the channel. There's not a great deal happening at the moment if you take Bernabe and Soro out of the equation, but I get the impression there is still more to come. In terms of non-Celtic related news, I've got a few other news stories on today's video that caught my interest. First up, and this is a major announcement from Celtic via... The London Stock Exchange. What an absolute buzz. It says, Celtic has enjoyed a strong on-pitch performance in the 2021-2022 football season and has returned to full capacity spectator attendance following the loosening of the COVID-19 restrictions. This means that revenue for the year ended 30th of June 2022 will be significantly higher than market expectations, which were forced at a time when the outlook was understandably more cautious as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Player registration valuations and player trading can and often do materially influence Celtic's financial performance in addition to revenue. In this context, the summer transfer window is now open and the club intends to publish its results for the year ended the 30th of June 2022 in mid-September, blah, 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 blah. Forget most of that. The bit that you need to pay attention to there is the significantly higher than market expectations bit. Last year, revenues fell from 70 million to 60 million at Celtic. So interesting to see where they're at when we do release these figures in mid-September, as the club said. Of course, these figures won't include things like the Champions League group stage money. That will be factored in in the following year's accounts. Also won't include our trip to Australia, which is said to be worth a hell of a lot of money to the club as well. So basically, due to the backing of supporters buying season tickets, buying match tickets, buying merchandise, on that note, the away kit is now out in stores. I believe I may or may not have purchased it, and you may or may not see it on the channel, on me at some stage in the coming days and weeks. Um, But yeah, due to stuff like that, and I think clever planning from the club as well. Celtic are in a pretty pretty good, pretty strong financial position at the moment. We've got Australia in November. As I say, that'll be worth even more money to us. And we've got Austria in July. Do you see what I did there? And we found out some more details about this trip over to Austria via SLFC Soccer, who it's a little bit vague, but I believe are kind of the organisers of these tours in Austria. In an article on their website, they have gone into depth on some of the big clubs that are coming to Austria for pre-season training this summer. The key paragraph, which features Celtic, reads, On the 4th of July, one of the absolute top clubs we are allowed to welcome this year moves into their quarters near Wiener Neustadt. For one week, the Celtic FC attends a training camp in Austria. The team from Glasgow plays a friendly match against SK Rapid Wien on the 9th of July in the Allianz Stadium in Vienna. Apologies to any Austrians or indeed Germans who are watching this video. So that is the 
second fixture that would kind of wondered what it was going to be. Remember Celtic announced that they'll play six pre-season games. They announced the opposition for the final four and just left that kind of vague two-match thing. So one friendly, still unknown, rapid away, Bannock, Ostrava away, then Blackburn Rovers at home, Legia Warsaw away for Arta Boric's tribute, Norwich City at home, and then if you want to push it on, Flag Day against Aberdeen a week later. That is three weekends of Celtic Park football in a row, hopefully with the sun shining, but we'll need to wait and see on that one. Seems we'll be based at Bad Erlich, which is south of Vienna. That'll be from the 4th of July until the 12th of July, and that game against Banik Ostrava is on the 13th of July. So the dates are kind of stacking up here. All we need to know is the, the opponents for that first match. Ben Segrist did let it slip yesterday that this Monday is the first day back for players. Now, I would assume that's for non-international players. I think the likes of Cal McGregor and Josip Juranovic will be getting a little bit longer off to recover because they've not really had a summer at all, apart from maybe 10 days right after the season. Whether that's to go straight into training or not on Monday, I'm not sure. Maybe they'll have a couple of days of you know, paintballing or playing each other in FIFA or something like that before they get into training. But they will have a week together, or pretty much a week before heading out to Austria the following Monday. We also know that Harry Kuehl is at Lennox Town too. He did his first Celtic in-house media interview earlier today. You'll be able to check that on club channels by the time this video goes up. So it's all happening. It's all heating up. Tomorrow, I'll be back again when we'll be saying a very special 67 Hail Hail goodbye to a legend. Um, pretty vague, but join us in. <laughs>